Hi, so I am the envy of quite a few of my friends today because I am here chatting with Joel Ann Clifton, who we all know was one of the professionals on Strictly Come Dancing and lifted that glorious glitter ball trophy with Ore Adube. But Joanne is also a world and European ballroom champion, as well as being an established television presenter on shows like Strictly's It Takes Two, but also a singer and an actress, having performed in Thoroughly Modern Millie, Rocky Horror and The Addams Family. But now Joanne is ditching the goth for the green because she is on tour with Shrek the Musical, which is stomping its way to the Manchester Opera House from the 1st to the 12th of August. And we're really excited for you to bring a little bit of fairy tale magic our way. So thank you very much, Joanne, for joining us. I honestly can't wait. And it's so funny how you say I'm going green. I'm going from goth to green. It's such a different role. It's so different. It couldn't be more Tisha and Princess Fiona. The, like, it's just total opposites. But that's what makes it exciting. It does, doesn't it? It's what makes this job and this world absolutely bonkers, but lovable at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so Shrek, um, I'm guessing kind of everybody surely knows the story of Shrek, right? But just in case there's a few sort of newer fledglings out there um can you talk us through it and also why it is a little bit of a fairy tale with a difference as well well what well the story of shrek is basically you've got this ogre called shrek he lives in his swamp and suddenly all these fairy tale creatures get thrown onto his swamp by this lord farquad right um and lord farquad wants to become a king and so the only way he's going to do that is by marrying a princess so shrek goes marches to, to talk to him about these fairy tale creatures that he doesn't want it on his swamp. And Lord Varquard sends him on the mission to rescue the princess, me, from a <laughs> tower and from this uh, dragon and bring her back. And that way he said, I'll give you your swamp back. But on the way, Shrek meets a donkey. They become best mates. Um, there's Princess Fiona. I won't give too much away for people who haven't, uh, who don't know the story and something happens there. And there's an unexpected twist at the end. There is, there is. And obviously, Princess, you've said you're playing Princess Fiona. Um, so she's got more of, she's a princess with a difference. Let, let's say that. She's a princess yeah. with a little bit of a difference. Um, and she has more of a backstory in the musical than the film, doesn't she? So what can you tell us about? We find out a little bit about her when she's younger. We see different ages of her and things like that. So what do we know about Princess Fiona and what's it been like playing her? Oh, well, Princess Fiona thinks that it, uh, she's been locked in a tower since she was like seven years old. Um, and she reads all these stories, all the, all the famous fairy tales that we know. Um, she's read all about them all her life. So she's just waiting. She thinks, oh, you know, I'm a proper princess. Or I need a, a a lovely knight or a prince to come and rescue me and then I'll fall in love and then I'll get married. Just like all the fairy tales um, say that happens. Uh, and it doesn't happen like that for her. It doesn't happen like that at all. Um, and she's a bit taken back. But in the end, I think it's right what happens to her. And what was the second question? Because I forgot. What's it like playing her? Because she is oh, she's kind of a bit of a kick-ass princess, isn't she? So, Well, the thing is, like, talking to my family and friends, when I told them that I'd got the role, they were like, oh, my gosh, that's you. Like, <laughs> And I was like, is that a compliment? Am I, am I going great? Am I, you're saying, what, I'm, I'm an ogre and stuff like that? And, and uh, they're like, no, no, it's, it's, it's just like, because if you think of a ballroom dancer, a world champion ballroom dancer, yeah. and a, a strictly champion dancer, you think, oh, you know, graceful, wearing beautiful long dresses, making lovely, like, Darcy Bustle type lines, and just being well spoken and, and soft, and this, that, and the other. But I'm not. So it's a bit like Princess Fiona, bit of trying to be, oh, I'm trying to be this princess, but she's not. So it's yeah. like, it's my dream role and everybody's saying it's the perfect role for me. So. Brilliant. I love that. I love that analogy. <laughs> um, and obviously Shrek, um, we get a little bit of a backstory about him as well. And kind of the way that, um, again, he's, he's, he's an ogre, except he's only an ogre because that's kind of what he's told he is you know, from a very young age. And what's actually inside is something very, very different. And that doesn't kind of come out till he meets Donkey, um, who sees the real him. So is it kind of really just like squishable, being able to give this message to all these young people in the audience that 
be who you are, not who someone tells you I, that you are. Exactly that. I think I think it's not just for young people, kids. I think it's yeah. for adults as well. I think it's it's literally for everybody. It's such an important message that you know you don't have to be what you think people expect of you. Just be you. Just be you. Be friends with who you want to be friends with. You don't have to live up to what other people think you should be doing or the way that they think you should be acting it's like because I am a world champion ballroom dancer it's like if someone says to me, oh no well well you need to you need to have lessons in speech then you need to speak that differently no absolutely not so it, it's got this really important message to all of them as you say Shrek it's the same he's been just told that he's a he's an ogre and everybody hates him and and you know he, he just needs to be on his own and go off and live in a swamp by himself because everybody hates him and he's just awful whereas actually doesn't need to be like that no he doesn't does it and and we kind of see um that there's this battle going on between Shrek and Fiona in the duet that they have I got you beat um and it, it's as to who's had it, who's had the worst upbringing, um, and it's a duet with a difference. Um, there's a lot of additional <laughs> skills that you've been probably able to add to your resume from it. Did it? What's it been like learning that one? Did it take you just back to being a kid? Absolutely. Now I have a tattoo on my arm actually that says "I wish, I wish, I wish," and this this basically it comes from. From doing panto and I did Cinderella it was my first panto and I I was a fairy godmother and I had to get the children in the audience the cross their fingers and go I wish I wish I wish and I would look out and see them doing it and it would make me emotional because these kids like they proper believe in magic and they they proper believe that you know miracles can happen and when she turns and the dress changes they they thought they believed that they did that and this tattoo here always reminds me just to stay like just have a part of me that's still a kid yeah. so the song I've got you be brings that out like massively and I cannot wait for my two um ballroom dancer parents to sit in the audience and watch me doing this number yeah who'd have thought who'd have thought and um as we've said like Princess Fiona very much marches to the beat of her own drum um you know she's she's she, she shows that what like you said earlier maybe what she thinks she wants isn't what she needs um yeah. And, and I think that so through that duet, that's kind of where Shrek and Fiona make their connection, isn't it? And, and it, but the really interesting thing is, is everything that makes them different from the mainstream is exactly what connects them together. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that kind of... Is there that is a line. Yeah. There's, a, there's a line in the song, and that's the moment where they just both realise that they've, they're kind of... Yeah, very, very different on paper, but actually very similar and had very similar childhood and things like that. And uh, yeah. that's where they connect, connect. Yeah, it's that one line in the song. It's amazing. And going back to, um, obviously, we know, you you know, everybody, the world knows that you're an incredible, incredible um, ballroom dancer. We've seen you do the Latin dance and everything. But you get to do a big solo that's a tap dance. So yeah. is it, what's it like? Kind of, I know you can kind of, turn your hand to anything but being able to go out there and show do you know what look at else what, what what else I can do is it really cool to go yeah I can tap dance as well with I mean, rats, it's by the way, with rats. It is, <laughs> yeah it is quite cool um I I'm not the I mean it's so far apart from it's, it's the other end of the spectrum to ballroom dance yeah like for oh, example in, in ballroom I've done years of like strengthening my ankles to make a perfect closing of the feet in a in the waltz and things like that and I used to do exercises all the time just being on my toes and strengthening those ankles as soon as you get in a, into tap they're like yeah free off the ankles like it, it's the opposite to what I've been trained in um however I have done thoroughly more millie I've done top hat so I have learnt tap and um yeah I mean you'll just have to see how well I do <laughs> yeah That's it's because it's a huge number it's the opening of act two um yeah. I sing and then in the middle there is this huge number and when we did the read through and the sing through on uh Monday I actually didn't realize how long it was I was like <laughs> I was like waiting to come back in with my singing where we just sat around the table and I was just looking at the musical director going now he's like no yeah now not yet so I've got to basically sing do this massive tap number and then sing so I've got to build up my stamina as well for that yeah I, yeah I, I don't envy you with that one because it is it's I was watching the DVD again the other day and it is it's just like 
Wow, yeah, it, it's it's very big. Um, so with um, obviously we've said in that number you you are dancing with rats, you know, as you do, and the reveal of the rat costumes is fantastic. The way that it's done from big to small, and sorry, other way around, small to big. But that brings me to kind of all the different costumes in this show, um, because they're just the whole design of this show is just amazing. And I don't know if you can answer this because it's not so much your costume, but some of the other costumes, like how like Donkey and Shrek, how do they not pass out? How does Shrek hear anything? And like, well, I know. Well, yeah. To be honest, it's it's funny how you're saying about like the reveal of the rats and the costumes and stuff like that. This is a completely new production. Oh. This is a, yeah. This is a dream DreamWorks official new production oh. of the musical. So the set is going to be different. The costumes are slightly different. Like it is, it is different. So maybe we won't be revealing. Maybe not. Rats. You know, oh, so it might be enough. something different. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of lot of big changes. However, the costumes, I know what you mean. When we had the meeting on Monday and they were showing the costumes and we were talking about them, the costume designer, he was he was saying, like, I, it might be a put ice packs down your costume <laughs> situation, <laughs> especially in like over the summer and stuff, because whew, lots yeah. of padding in a lot of different characters' costumes. And it must be so much fun to be doing this. It's like you say, it just brings that kid out in you, doesn't it? It's... Honestly, I sent my mum a message, a text that very first day when I met everyone and did the read through. And I was just like, I'm so happy I could cry. Oh. I just love the show. I love the role. I love everybody here. Everybody's so flipping talented. It's just, and then we saw the set design and we saw the new costume design and the new set design. And everything was just like, oh, it's just magical. Oh, brilliant. And what, like we've got Shrek, we've got four films. Um, there's rumours of a fifth one. We've got spin-off films with the Puss in Boots. We've yeah. got the musical. We've got a ride in Universal Studios. What do you think it is about Shrek that makes it so popular? I just think the humour, and I think, as we said, the message behind it of being who you want to be. Now more than ever, we just need that. That's all we need. We need we need to go in. We need to have come out of the theatre with smiles on our faces. Um, and, and we need to be like, yeah. I just want to be like, I want to dress like this today. Do you know what? And I'm going to, do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Now more than ever, we need Shrek. In now, we need Shrek. There you have it. So thank you, Joanne. We cannot wait for Shrek to come along to the Opera House. Um, it's coming the first, as we said, first to the 12th of August. So make yourself some waffles, grab your gumdrop buttons and get yourself down to the swamp and just be a believer and find your own happy ever after. Thank you so, so much for chatting with us and all the best with the tour. Thank you so much. Thank you.